Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, the first part of our 3.2, module 3.2, uh, simplifying expressions uh, with ra uh, rational exponents and radicals. Okay, so exponents, uh, rational means fractional exponents, okay, and then um, we'll exchange them into radicals here. So, so our question is, how can we write a radical expression with a rational exponent, okay, so, or with a fractional exponent? So we talked about this uh, prior, you guys. Re remember, a to the power of m over n, this bottom number is called our index number. It's the, it's the root that we're doing right here. And the top number you can uh, put as the exponent inside or you can put it on the outside, whichever one works uh, the best. This one probably works uh, the best on the most of the problems right here, but every now and then we got to think about that. Uh, I'll show you here. So and then so um, uh, when when this is an even number right here, this number has to be positive. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but but I can I cannot do like the square root of a negative number right there. It's an undefined number. So anyway, so properties of rational exponents. Okay, so so remember when as long as these bases are the same, these two bases are the same, then we just add these exponents right here. Okay, so if we had set for example uh, x squared times x to the third, it would be x to the fifth because there's five of them. Okay, and then when we have um, uh, the same base and we have a division property happening right here then we just subtract these exponents right here okay typically whenever you have a, a fraction this denominator can't equal zero so I should have wrote on there a cannot equal zero um, and then uh, here you just uh, both of these go to this power right here that's what this says right here and you multiply so um, and then when we have a fraction to an exponent then that means the numerator is to the exponent and same with the denominator see here I said the denominator can equal zero. You can't have zero in a denominator. You can't divide by zero. Whenever you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. And then when you have a negative exponent, then put it in the denominator and it becomes a positive exponent right there. Okay, and then uh, if the negative exponent is in the denominator, then put it in the numerator and it becomes a positive exponent. And if you ever have a fraction that has a negative exponent, then just flip the fraction and it becomes a positive exponent. Okay, and then those last two are not in the book, but they're, they're awesome to have, you guys, so to use. And we'll use some of those here in just a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify here. So we have the cube root, the cube root of xy to the ninth right there. Okay, so from the this property here, um, then then this becomes the numerator and this becomes the denominator. So then let's simplify that. Nine thirds is just three right there. So it's just x to the third, y to the third, okay? So probably either one of these will be okay. So you start playing match the answer game to whatever the, the, the book gives you for an answer. All right, here you guys, we got the fifth root of x times the square root of x. Okay, now it's understood there that's x to the first and that's x to the first. Do you remember what number goes there if there's no number there? A two goes there. So uh, let's rewrite it like that, and then we're going to write it like this, okay? So remember, these index numbers are the denominator. So this is x to the 1 fifth, and this is x to the 1 half right there, okay? And then now we're going to do uh, adding those exponents. So 1 half plus, uh, I'm sorry, 1 fifth plus 1 half, get a common denominator, which is 10. So we get 2 tenths plus 5 tenths, or 7 tenths. So this is uh, x to the 7 tenths right here. And, and typically, you guys, if we started with a radical problem right here, like right here, Let's change this back to a radical um, uh, expression right here. So this is the index number, so that goes on the on the outside of the radical. Okay, so we get the tenth root of x to the seventh. Okay. How about this guy here? Okay, so here let's go ahead and uh, put this in a. Um, we'll we'll put them all in in uh, uh, what I do. Oh, powers raised to powers. Sorry. So two times two gives me that four right there. There's a one right there. So one times two is two right there. So that's where we get this expression right here. And then put this as a rational exponent. So it's the inside over the outside. So that so this this four is this numerator here and that index is the four. All right, let's change that to y to the one because four over four equals one. And then we're going to go ahead and add these exponents right here. So it's going to be x to the the fourth and then y to the third so we're just going to go ahead and add those exponents okay all right what else do we have okay 
So here, let's put these guys in fractional form. So this is going to be x to the 4 eighths over x to the 6 fourths right there, okay? All right, and then uh, let's see, what did I do? I cleaned those up, okay? So 8 fourths is 2, and 6 fourths is uh, 3 halves right there, because uh, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 4 2 times. Okay, so now we're going to subtract these exponents right here from this property. Is If these bases are the same, then we subtract the exponents. So this exponent minus this one. So 2 minus 3 halves. Okay, so this 2 is the same as 4 halves. So 4 halves minus 3 halves is 1 half. And again, since this is a radical expression, let's change this back into a radical expression. So this 2 goes on the outside. We won't write it. This 1 goes on the inside. We won't write it. So it's just the square root of x right there, okay? All right, so here's uh, back in the beginning of this. Why is, uh, when this is even, why is it um, not defined when this is a negative number? So that's what this says, when a is less than zero. So this is, when this is a negative number. Well, um, we kind of talked about it. So that an example is the square root of negative 16. It's undefined because there's no number times itself that gives you a negative 16. I know four times four is 16. Negative four times negative four is also 16. I can never multiply the same number times itself and get this right here. So when this is an even number here, here it's uh, 2 because there's no number there, but if that's an even number, then a must be a positive. It could be 0, so they just say it's non-negative because uh, otherwise um, uh, we get undefined numbers right there, okay, which is a calculus thing we'll deal with later in calculus. All right, so let's go ahead and keep simplifying here. Okay, so here we have uh, changed 8 to 2 to the third so there's 2 to the third and then we did uh, this goes to this power and then this goes to this power right here all right and then when we have powers to powers we multiply these powers right here okay so here we go I'm gonna go ahead and multiply these guys so um, uh, this 3 times negative 2 thirds is negative 2 and then this 9 times negative 2 thirds is negative 6 because 3 goes into 9 um, uh, 3 times and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 Okay, so this is going to be 2 to this power, and this is going to be x to this power right here. Okay, so there we go. And then uh, remember when we have negative exponents, they go in the denominator and they become a positive exponent. And then just clean it up, we get uh, 1 over 4x to the 6th right there. Okay, so how is um, uh, that last expression that we just uh, worked with, how is uh, 8x to the ninth, all to the negative two thirds related to eight x to the ninth uh, to the positive two thirds. All right, well, if I put this in the denominator to make it a, a positive right there, a positive exponent right there, then they're just reciprocals. This is the reciprocal of that right there, okay? So how are they related? They are reciprocals of each other. All right, so some more simplifying here. Okay, so let's, um, uh, let's go ahead and put uh, slide this right up here in the top right here. So there's that right there, and then what did I do after that? Uh, I think I flipped it. Yeah, I flipped it because it's a negative exponent. So if I flip that fraction, it becomes a, a positive exponent. Okay, and then uh, and then there's four x's on top. Are going to take a four away four of these uh, x's on bottom. So there's eight left. So there's that right there. And let's go ahead and put this in. Um, uh, uh, let's go ahead and change this. Sorry. So this is two squared. I remember what I did now. So so there's several ways we can do these, you guys, to get to the correct answer. So if you do it a different way, and and, um, and when kids ask me, is it okay if I do it this way? I, I usually say, are you getting the same answer as I am? And if they are, then I'll say, yeah just saves time. All right, so now I'm going to go power to power. So 2 times a half and then 8 times a half. Well, 2 times a half is 1. 8 times a half is 4. Okay, so let's go ahead. And so here's 2 to the first over x to the fourth. So we get 2 over x to the fourth is our simplified version. Okay, let's try that with this. Okay, again, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to slide this right here. Okay, and then I'm going to change, uh, yep, I changed uh, 9 to 3 squared. And then I'm going to do 4 times 1 half because they're all powers to powers. So 4 times a half is 2. 2 times a half is 1. And 12 times a half is 6. So I get all of that right there, okay? Oops, I canceled first. Whoops. So I was doing it a different way. So it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. So so four X's here cancels off four of these right here. Now I'm going to do this. So one to the one half is just one. One to any power is just one. And then two times a half is one. Eight times a half is four. So we get um, uh, one over three to the first X to the fourth, which is just one over 
3x to the fourth right there. Okay, all right, so let's do an application problem here. So the approximate number of calories C that an animal needs is given by this formula right here. C equals 72 m to the 3 fourths power, where m is the animal's mass in kilograms. So find the number of uh, calories that a 16 kilogram dog needs each day. So 16 is going to be the mass, so we're going to plug in 16 right there, okay? So there we go, and then uh, I'm going to change uh, 16 to um, uh, into a radical form right there, okay? So 72 times 16 to the 3 fourths, so then remember this is the index number and this is the outside number right there. 16 is 2 to the 4th, you guys, so let's change that, okay? And then uh, when we have the 4th root of 2 to the 4th, it's just this number inside of here, okay? so. Uh, it's going to be uh, that 2 right there, okay, so so this red stuff gives me that 2 right there, and then so here's 2 to the 3rd right there, so now we got to do 2 to the 3rd, which is 8, and then 72 times 8 is 576. Remember, always answer, this 576 doesn't mean anything until you put it in the context of this problem right here. So a 16 kilogram dog is going to need 576 kilo, or cal calories each day. All right, you guys, if you are in our class, we're going to give you a handout. Okay, take care.